All right, uh, tell us your name and wh what you're doing with the show. Hi, my name's Steve Hendel, and I'm a lead producer and co-conceiver of the show. Okay, now what, what does the producer do? Well, in this case, the producer um, falls in love with an idea, has the idea, and you know has the energy and passion and craziness to put the whole show together. When did you first come up with this idea? Because this is a unique show. I've never seen anything like this before. Um, you know, I came up with the idea somewhere around 2000. I mean, I bought one of Fela Kuti's records and by chance, and I started listening to it, and I was just totally blown away. And the more you listen and the more you understand uh, what he was singing about and what he was doing with his life and how he was using his music and what he and his country were going through, the more I sort of became convinced that this was one of the great stories of of my time one of the great stories of what a, what an artist can do what an artist stands for what art can do uh, what someone who's committed to uh, use his abilities to uh, try and stand up for human dignity can make a difference so I um, I decided to try and get the rights to his life and his music and concoct somehow a theater piece that would um, you know that would work. Well, who did you contact, and what did they say when you said that you want they you wanted to make a musical of this? What did they What did they think? Well, this you know I, I had this idea somewhere. I, I guess it was probably around two thousand one or two. I finally um, worked up the gumption to say you know I'm just going to try and do this, and and I said okay I'm going to hire a, an attorney, an entertainment attorney who I, I, my wife and I were friendly with. And I said, figure out how to get the rights. And Fela Kuti died in 1997. Uh, the rights were held by his estate, which is administered in Lagos, Nigeria, uh, for the benefit of his children. And I think they got the request and said, what's a musical? What is this? You know, who's pestering us? What does this person want to do? And it took about mm, a year f to get the rights, basically. Um, has the show evolved? since from when it was first produced? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it evolved. Um, you know, we originally we developed it over the course of four years in um, dance studios and off-Broadway, off off-off-Broadway theater locations. Uh, then we, you know, had a 10-week development project uh, where, you know, 50 artists in a room led by Bill T. Jones, sort of collaborated and improvised what became the off-Broadway show. Um, and then, you know, we took a year off and moved it to Broadway, and that was a slightly different show, since the off-Broadway show was two hours and 50 minutes, and you can't do that on Broadway. <laughs> <laughs> and have an audience come. You and can't, just have to bring a pillow. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and then when we've taken this tour, we shortened it again, although somehow it always ends up being about two hours and 30 minutes uh, with the intermission and everything. Um, and we combined the, you know, the Broadway cast with the London cast, because we did a show in London at the same time as we were on Broadway. So we have this amazing cast. In many respects, it's probably the best cast we've ever had. And we, uh, and you know, the show is just, you know, it's just astonishing what's happened with the show. What do you want audiences to walk away with? You know, well, it's a very complicated question. Um, you know, it really is. Because one thing, you know, I mean, I want them to walk away and say this was so exciting, so entertaining. You know, my mother has to see it. My daughter has to see it. My neighbors have to see it. Um, and, then, and, and then I want them to walk away and say... What, what was that? What, what, why, am, why do I feel different? You know, what, what, was, what was that about? You know, how do I want to live my life tomorrow? Because it does, um, you know, it's a very, um, what's the word? It's a very subversive show. And it's deliberately subversive. You know, it's got, it, it, it's hugely entertaining. I mean, you know, people don't know this music. Uh, they've never seen choreography like this. I don't think there are performances like this. There's people who have such exceptional talents. We have one of the world's great African griots in the ensemble. Most people have never seen a single African griot, let alone, you know, a world-class African griot. Um, and, you know, so, you know, the, the idea is to take people on a journey. Uh, 
Uh, they, you know, unlike most product in Broadway, because this is not a Broadway product. This is sort of an anti-Broadway product in many respects. Uh, you know, you won't fi you won't know in 15 minutes everything that's going to happen for the next hour and 45 minutes. In fact, you won't know until the last minute what actually the show was about. I've been living with the show, you know, in my head or on the stage for 12 years, and I, I don't think I'll I don't think I'll ever have a company like this that's able to deliver a show like this and and I do believe and I do I sort of think I'm a rational human being you know I, mean, I, I actually have a a rational day job I'm not delusional in any respect but I do think that this is um, you know this is an experience that combines entertainment and art and social message and spirituality on such high levels that you know the, that it's an overwhelming uh, night in, in the theater. Look, I, I, I told um, you know, Jay-Z's, uh, Will Smith's partner and Jay-Z's business manager when we were discussing their getting involved, I said, look, you know, you'll never be able to put your names and attach yourself and be involved with anything like this. You know, literally tens of millions of people around the planet will see this show. And the show is transformative. It's about standing up for human dignity. It's about using your talent, your gift, your creativity, art, to make a difference in the world. And, um, you know, unfortunately, we're always going to have to stand up for human dignity. Mm -hmm. And the problems that Fella was singing about, you know, in 1976, 1977, are the same problems today. And they're not just in Nigeria. You know, we have the same you know, forms of corruption here in the United States, you know, Citizens United. I mean, what is Citizens United? It's on the stage. This is why the show has such direct, uh, you know, current relevance. Uh, speaking of Nigeria, I heard that you took this show to Nigeria. How did they react? Um, well, you know, that was, it was amazing. I, I um, and how did they react? You know, they were very, you know, they were very, it's a very complicated, question how did they react okay That's why I asked. very complicated <laughs> for one thing is you know who are these Americans coming and doing a show about our iconic figure who are they what gives them the right to do that why aren't there any Nigerians in the cast uh, and you know we had a press conference at the beginning and uh, one of the journalists said you know exactly why aren't, why aren't there any Nigerians here and you know the cast answered the question. Uh, I answered it. Two cast members answered it. And one cast member said, um, "You know, look. You know, we have an audition process. Anyone could audition." And Bill T. Jones and the producer took the people they thought would be the right people for the show. And I answered and I said, "Look, you know, this is an American show. This is not a Nigerian show. We don't profess." to have made a Nigerian show. This is an American artistic response to how we interpret the meaning and legacy and importance of your iconic figure. And one of the cast members said, and this was the thing that was the most emotional really, he said, said we don't know where we're from. You know, we're African Americans. We, um, we were brought forcibly from Africa to America. We don't know who we are. We may be Nigerians, but we've come to do this show, and we believe in it, we're committed to it, and we're here to bring it to Nigeria. Fela Kuti was a very complicated person, and uh, his legacy in Nigeria was a very complicated legacy. And a, a lot of 30-year-olds, I would say the majority of 20 to 35-year-olds uh, that I met would come up and say, you know, we weren't allowed to go to these shows. We weren't really encouraged to listen to the music. Fela Kuti was wild. He was out of control. He was taking drugs. He was uh, misbehaving. And now we see the show and we understand we understand what was going on. We understand actually what he did. And it's interesting because the show redefined in Nigeria his legacy for the people. 
And I think that's one of the magical things about the show. It's one of the magical things about art is that our artistic exploration to try and make a show that we thought for us had authenticity and meaning uh, about this great artist led by Bill T. Jones, who's America's great performance artist. We created something that is a, is a, is it, you know, from America to Africa to America, America to Africa, we have a lot to learn from each other. Is one of the few lines in the play spoken between ca characters. And yet, what we did on a very high level, as it turns out, was we created a show that makes that cultural identification and that literally brings people in Africa and people in the United States and African Americans in the United States together. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's why, you know, it's just sort of an exceptional thing. Yeah.